The democratization of data in business aviation. This is a term that is thrown around quite a bit today. What is the democratization of data? Simply put, it's data transparency. Bringing data to the marketplace with no, gate, with no gatekeepers. Something I think we can all agree, if you've listened here the last day and a half, can all agree that something that's desperately needed in our, in our industry. Number, uh, and why is it needed? Well, I think today we're facing a fair amount of geopolitical headwinds. We just heard uh, in-depth discussion on environmental concerns, right? And there was a panel yesterday where I heard two data points, right? Two data points, and I think that this, was, this was great. There was someone up here who mentioned, you know, over a beer with a climatologist, the climatologist will tell you the Earth's heating up, is warming up, but we don't know if, you know, humans are partially responsible for that. That is an argument as an industry we absolutely cannot make. Uh, then I heard another point which said, you know, three of, the three of the largest and leading business environmentalists on this planet all fly their own business jet. Now that's a conversation we can have, weighing the environmental costs against the environmental and economic benefits uh, of business aviation. That's an argument and that's a conversation that we can't shy away from. Uh, class warfare. You know, Steve and Ali Reza, we were just talking about, you know, the elections in the United States and who's going to win and what are the outcomes. And I, I don't really, I don't know yet. Things change so quickly. What I do know is we are seeing now a cla class warfare like I have never seen in my, in my lifetime, pointing to millionaires and billionaires and referring to it as it's a dirty word and punishing people and shaming people because of, success, because of the success that they've had and, the, people, and the, the, the businesses that they've built. So what does that lead to? It's created an environment of flight shaming. And so what can we do? Well, I think to date, we've largely been our own worst enemy. We leave our customers in the dark when it comes to information and data. So, without data, without transparency, what do we have? Well, we put our customers in a position to blindly trust operators. And I'm sure we all know someone who's had a horrible experience along the way. And this then has a cascading effect which impacts us all. For the manufacturers, the OEMs, you lose customer ownership, you lose opportunities to sell aircraft because customers have had a bad experience and they're going to look for alternatives. Management companies, it's gotten so competitive, they drive their management, their management fees so low that you have an environment where they look to make it up by marking up invoices. So no one knows what it actually costs. To our lenders in the market, how do you build an operating budget when you don't understand what the costs actually are. What are the costs? So, why do we have this environment here? Well, I think it's largely driven off of the fragment, off of the, just the very nature of our industry. Business aviation is incredibly fragmented. We have 22,000 business jets out there, 15,000 management entities. Do the math. 90% of our owners 90% of our owners have, have limited to really no industry knowledge, and only 10% of the owners are aviation professionals. So, of course, this leads to fragmentation, and if we're not careful, I think we have real challenges ahead. With that said, this small niche industry with 22,000 aircraft Still, there's a $32 billion annual spend on services, maintenance, fees. There's plenty to go around. However, if we don't share data, you're going to have this opaque market. It's a picture of my daughter, by the way. <laughs> you have this opaque market, which creates confusion. It creates frustration, and that limits growth. 
that limits growth. And today we're starting to see this appear in the headlines. We're starting to see it appear in the headlines. In the last 12 months, you know, Bloomberg and others have run articles. The super rich are being scammed on their private jets. The super rich getting scammed in the opaque private jet market. And here are just a few examples. You know, 5,000 for catering on an empty jet. The aircraft being billed for two times the amount of fuel the aircraft can hold. It doesn't put us in the best light. Every flight, you've got dozens of invoices. And you could have the same flight on the same aircraft different time of day, and you'll have different costs. There's no uniformity. So we've got millions of flights per year, tens of millions of invoices. Every trip is different. My own experience, relatively limited in this industry, We've seen everything at JSSI, right? We, uh, we provide maintenance programs for 2,000, 2000 aircraft. We receive in excess of 10,000 invoices a year, maintenance invoices a year. We have a team, fortunately, you know, 75 auditors who go through every single invoice, but these are real life examples of within the last few weeks, invoices that we've received. Just a couple of examples, one line item. $1.3 million. Two line items, $3.3 million. Okay, not a single component listed with their cost, not a single labor hour with the labor rate. Here's almost $5 million on a handful of line items with no explanation. Now we have the relationship with our suppliers where we can push back and say, that doesn't work for us. We need more detail. But for those individuals out there who have no experience and limited experience, they're cutting these, che they're cutting these checks with no information. So what's the solution? What can we do about it? Well, I don't know if I've got, a, I don't think I've got a silver bullet or an easy answer, but I think the solution is we need some centralization of data, right? If you have a centralized database, and the mechanics of how you built this are debatable, but then you have a platform to do benchmarking, analyze real cost data across the entire market. You can set standards, you can create analytics, predictive and prescriptive, and it puts our customer in a position where they're informed. Now, yesterday I was with Steve Versano and I was looking at the wall in his office in the jet business and you know we were both from New York and he asked me if I remember Sims. Sims was a, is a discount clothing retailer, long gone, but it was a discount clothing retailer in New York. I can assure you it's been a long time since Steve's bought a suit from Sims. But he said their tagline, what their tagline is, an, edu an educated customer is our best customer. And I think that applies to us and this industry. An educated consumer makes informed decisions. Well, important. Well, it's important because when you have transparency, you can set expectations and there's no surprises. There's no surprises, so the customer knows what they're getting. And then that leads to repeat business. You screw a customer once, they're gone forever. So what are we doing? I can apply just some of my, the, own st the, the steps that we have taken, what JSSI has taken. Uh, we, last year, we acquired Conklin and Decker, And we saw this as a vehicle to take our 30 years worth of maintenance data and be transparent with it and put it out there and provide it in the terms of operating costs. Uh, through our customer and through our Conklin and Decker network. Now we're still building this, we still have a lot of work to do, but I think it's important that, the, that our consumer understands what things cost. Uh, just some other industry examples, and we just pulled a few, but we're seeing it today. We're starting to see a movement where companies are taking steps to bring data and transparency to the market. MySky, they're looking at building this large database, IATA, bringing industry standards on the brokerage side,
fueler links, giving customers data so they understand, you know, at the airport, at the, FB, at the airport, you can have five FBOs with five different fuel costs, understanding what those fuel costs are so you can make informed decisions. So we live in a market and we live in a world that is rapidly evolving. It's amazing. My kids, they talk to Siri and they have data at their fingertips in instantaneously. So the world is evolving. We need to assure, assure that we evolve with it. Thank you very much. Much. Do we have any old fashioned questions? Okay, Neil, here's a big question. Why own a jet? Here's a big question from a charter operator. Why own a jet with such variable costs when you can charter and know that the price you're paying isn't going to have any hidden gotchas? Well, I, again, I really think it comes down to every individual's own profile. And their, own, and their own needs. I think for a lot of them, a large segment of the market, charter obviously works. But for, there's a number of cases that you can make where you need to actually, where you need to own your own jet. The other issue with data is that business aviation doesn't have as much as the airlines. You touched on that. You don't sure. have the big data. So one solution is sharing. Do you see that any interest from people in the industry to share data? Uh, I, I, I see a <laughs> I don't see a willingness or an openness to sharing data. And I think that's the challenge, right? It's so fragmented. An airline with a large fleet, they're able to draw conclusions and use their own data to drive decision making. How does an operator with you know, a legacy 650 and a Mustang, how do they use their data to drive informed decisions, right? You don't have enough. So you, there needs to be an effort and an initiative within the industry to share, to share data. Okay. Any more questions? Um, and also you win a point for having your daughter in the slides. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.